Welcome to Tag Village 101.2. In this lesson, we will discuss the core concepts behind Tag Village, which are tags and activity. Let's begin with the obvious first question. What are tags? In the basic sense, tags are things such as keywords, concepts, interests, commonalities, emotions, trends, Essentially, tags are the words that people type. And this brings us to the next obvious question. What is activity? Basically, activity is things such as page views or conversations, uploading photos, commenting, searching, instant messaging. Essentially, it's the interactivity with a website. However, as we pursue this lesson further, you will see that tags and activity are actually so much more. Let's take a brief look at the history of the World Wide Web. In the early days, the pre-1990s, the World Wide Web was primarily made up of message boards, and it was mostly used by technical users who were doing research in either storing or retrieving research documents. The popular World Wide Web began to emerge in the early 1990s, especially when email was invented and with the onset of large internet service providers and the mainstream web portals. During this time, the internet was primarily a secret garden or a walled-in garden with a big hedge around the outside. Essentially, members could connect to the internet through the internet service providers, but they really weren't able to go exploring on their own. Essentially, they were able to see only what the internet service provider wanted them to see, or if they accessed the web through a portal, they were able to see what the portal wanted them to see. So all of the programming, all of the news, all of the email content, basically everything that a person did in the early days of the World Wide Web was controlled by the internet service providers and the major web portals. The early days of the World Wide Web were a lot like broadcast television. In essence, you chose which channel you wanted to access the web through, and then they decided what content you would see, and most importantly, what advertising you would see. However, along came three major inventions that opened up the World Wide Web and allowed people to go and discover their own websites. These three major inventions were the Netscape browser, web directories, and the early search engines. But even with all of this newfound freedom, there were still three major problems with the early World Wide Web. First, it was difficult to find relevant websites. Second, the internet itself was very slow and cumbersome. And finally, most developers and internet search engines were losing money because advertising was essentially run-of-the-mill or not very relevant. So it was very hard for them to justify to the advertisers that this content was reaching people and that it was reaching the people the advertisers wanted to reach. In the late 1990s, a revolutionary new website emerged, which is now known as Google. Google would change the World Wide Web forever. So what did Google do that was so earth-shattering? Well, they introduced us to relevancy. Relevancy in search results and relevancy in the advertisements that were displayed. Now, people could find websites that had the content that they were looking for, and the advertisers could place ads in front of people who were looking for their specific product or service. And how did Google do this? They did it by building a database of keywords and also a database of inbound link popularity. It was a proprietary system and a revolutionary idea that Google created to attach keywords that people searched for with the content of websites and other sites linking to those websites using the same keywords. A great idea from Google. 
So let's see this in action. If you look at Google's website, let's say you're a, a woman searching for something that all women should have, a little black dress. You type in little black dress and you hit enter and Google brings back their results. Google has real estate on their website. The primary real estate on Google's website is the top three listings, which Google reserves for the most relevant advertisers in their database. In other words, the websites who have the most content relevant to this particular searched phrase, as well as linking in websites that also use the same phrase to link into this advertiser's site. Then, over on the right column, Google lists another list of advertisers. These ads are not quite as relevant, but still highly relevant to the term that was searched. So over here we see ads from advertisers who are targeting the same keyword as what the person searched for, but maybe their site is not quite as relevant as the top three advertisers. And then finally, we see on the bottom section of the site, Google has what we call the organic search results. Organic search results are essentially all of the websites out there in the internet that contain this particular phrase within their content. And then Google uses algorithms and proprietary software to determine which websites are the most relevant website to this particular search term. So if you searched for a little black dress, you will get advertisers that are the most relevant at the top advertisers on the right column that are also relevant and then organic search results from websites that contain content that matches what you're searching for. It didn't take long for Google's idea to catch on and not long after that almost every web directory and search engine out there used similar ideas and similar methods of ranking their search results and their advertisers. So relevancy mattered. And for nearly 10 years, the common phrase on the internet, the thing that drove all websites, the, the thing that you heard people saying left and right over and over again when you were starting a website and you wanted to get your website to rank was the phrase, content is king. Content is king was the dominant concept of the internet for nearly 10 years. Basically because the better the content of your website, the more keyword rich your content was, the more that your content was relevant to a particular idea or term or search phrase, the higher you would rank in the organic search results of Google and other search engines, and also the higher your ads would rank when you wanted to run an ad and target a specific specific phrase or a specific concept. So if I owned a website about shoes and I wanted to rank high under the web under the word shoes or the search phrase running shoes for example or I wanted my ads to appear on the first page of search results when somebody searched for running shoes, I had to make sure that I had a lot of content on my website that was centered around the phrase running shoes. So for 10 years, almost 10 years, the phrase content is king was the dominant phrase among web marketers and people who built websites and companies who ran their business online. You had to have rich content in order to get traffic. Over the past two years, however, the phrase content is king has been losing ground. Something is changing the internet. Something is taking away from Google's dominance of the internet and taking away the ability for advertisers to reach the masses through search engines the way they used to. And what has happened and what changed the, the, the whole entire internet and the whole entire space of the web in the last few years has been the, the dramatic emergence of two major types of websites. The first one was MySpace. MySpace came online and changed how people used the internet. But MySpace has gone away to say to a little degree. And actually, the real game changer in the last few years has been Facebook. Facebook is changing the web and changing the concepts of the internet and totally changing the ideas of how advertisers and how websites reach the masses. 
What is Facebook doing that's so different? Well, because of Facebook, we access information differently now. We connect more frequently to our network of friends. And more than that, we're constantly updated by our friends and, and our websites and the systems that we follow, the, the, the things that we like, the companies that we are, are fans of. We are updated by those people on a constant basis. Essentially what's happening is the concept that is changing behind the scenes in the internet is rather than us going out and finding information and finding websites the way we used to, information now finds us. So because information's finding us, things are changing. Content is no longer king. Why do we feel this way? Well, the answer lies in how things are happening now. More and more internet users expect information to find them. People will begin to search less and instead expect personally tailored suggestions to come their way. People will begin to expect their social graph to bring them their news, the trends and experiences, and things such as that. And people will also expect greater and greater transparency, which is going to result in a more personal internet experience. Let's see this in action. If you look at Facebook, one of the first things you see when you log into Facebook is information that your friends or your network has posted up that may be of interest to you. Facebook uses proprietary software to decide what information is relevant to you and to put that on your home page. Also, you'll notice upcoming events, things that are happening in your social network or your social graph that also may be of interest to you. The next thing you see on a Facebook page is that there are advertisers that are targeting you. And the awesome thing about Facebook's ads is they watch you, they watch your conversations, they learn about you, and they bring information from advertisers that is highly relevant to not only what you're seeking, but what you're doing, the conversations you're taking part of, the topics of those conversations, uh, how things are going in your life, what things are going going on in your life what activities are you are you involved in and then the f another thing that they show you is who is online at this moment or has recently been online who is in your social graph so that you can stay connected and all of this is, re is is evident by the sheer fact that Facebook calls your login screen your home page they call it your news feed. In other words, all of the news and the relevant information to you is coming to you. It's finding you rather than you going out there and finding it. So when we think of Google and Facebook, we ask ourselves, where are they winning? Well, Google is working more and more with traditional media and opening up new channels like YouTube and the purchase of DoubleClick and things like that are allowing them to get stronger holds in the search market and make more relevancy in search engines. Social sites like Facebook are winning because they're collecting billions of bits of personal information, the experiences, the relationships, the connections, the trends, the interests. All of these details are being collected and databased by these social networks. But as we think more about these two types of sites, we have to ask ourselves, what are they missing? Well. Google is blocked from the major social media, such as Facebook, so it can't index and build a personal search that incorporates the social graph that's been built by Facebook. And Facebook is basically a walled-in garden, and it, it blocks us from major media. For example, does Facebook bring you traditional news? Do you see headlines from the newspaper on Facebook? Um, does Facebook expand your exposure to other websites? You don't just go out and search the internet using Facebook. 
Uh, and, and the third thing, in many ways, Facebook is a lot like the original web portals. In other words, what you see on Facebook is what they allow to be published through their platform. So if it's not published through Facebook, you don't see it through Facebook. You have to leave Facebook to go and find it. So what's the answer? If the major search engines are blocked from social networks, and if the major social networks are basically walled in gardens, how do we break through this? What is the answer? Well, if we have anything to say about it, we think the answer will be Tag Village. Tag Village is developing a revolutionary new website, and it is growing into something that is going to be earth shattering. When Tag Village is complete, Tag Village will contain social networking and search all under one roof. Tag Village will do so many things. It's going to do things such as integrate search and social media into one site. It's going to integrate traditional media with the social graph. Tag Village will incorporate the traditional news with your personal news. And it'll integrate the World Wide Web along with the social graph, which expands transparency and expands your freedom to discover more of the Internet. Basically, Tag Village will bring a more personal, more enjoyable Internet experience. Imagine if you had all the best of Google plus all the best of Facebook plus you had all the best of shopping and in addition to that you had all the best of news all combined into one site that would be awesome but how do we tie it all together our answer is to build a database of tags and a database of activity. Tag Village is building a revolutionary new tag database which contains things like search terms or keywords like like what Google does but it also contains conversation topics, trends, emotions, common ties to other members, interests that you might have, maybe items that you seek, services that you're looking for, opinions that you express, belief systems that you hold, relationships, demographics about our members, statistics of where they go, what do they click, cultural aspects, subcultural nuances, hobbies, professions, educational traits, health, family aspects, public and private life, so much more. Basically, we are building a brand new revolutionary database that we call a tag database. We are also building a revolutionary new activity database where we will keep track of things such as search and music listened to, the moods that people post, the connections they make, the links that they click, the goods and services that they search for and purchase, the religious and political statements that people make or the opinions that they express, the depth of the conversations they have with one another, the frequency of their actions, the games that they play, um, articles that they read, videos that they watch, celebrities that they follow, time that they spend doing things, photos that they upload and and the people that they uh, that they link on those photos the websites that they visit the foods that they eat the chats that they have with their friends and their family uh, the posts that they place on their walls uh, their finances their investments and, and and even so much more basically we are building a revolutionary new database where we are now matching the activity of people on the website along with the search terms or the tags and the and the keywords that are used to identify those activities 
But unlike our competitors, Tag Village is tearing down the walls. We are going to build transparent interaction with the databases so that search can search social networking and so that social networking can interact with the outside world. And basically, it won't be a walled-in garden. You will have the freedom to explore the entire web. Because of the revolutionary interaction between tags and activity, things such as mainstream news and products, services, friends, family, jobs, even personal news and causes, and so much more, will actually find you. But most importantly, they'll be relevant to you. We believe that connecting tags with activity produces a very rich, very rewarding, extremely personal internet experience. In the next lesson, we will talk about how our core platforms will integrate tags and activity onto several different levels to accomplish all of this.